Introducing our newest contributor. Before you took them, I would shop them. Vivian Howard, a chef who left the New York City restaurant scene to return home to North Carolina, where she now owns three restaurants. And did we mention that Vivian was an intern here at Sunday Morning back in 1999? This morning, she has a message that's perfect for the season. Every culture seems to have a broth with healing powers. I never thought much about it before, but there's this bone broth craze sweeping America that's forced me to look closer at the slow stewed liquids we believe do more than just fill our bellies. Bone broth is made by simmering bones for a long, long, long time. It has a health-obsessed cult following. They believe that drinking it cures arthritis, boosts immunity, and helps you lose weight. I'm not a bone broth disciple. I believe it's actually stock, and stock is the foundation for many of the world's most iconic dishes. So we've been eating, drinking, and slurping something incredibly similar to bone broth for basically ever. This trend and the fact that someone shoves a bowl of chicken soup in your face every time you catch a cold suggests, though, that there is something to this idea that broths can heal. When I cooked at Spice Market, a New York restaurant dedicated to Asian street food, we made soup with black chickens, ginseng, and red dates. Chef Gray Coons told me it was a curative tradition from China, a tonic that addressed fatigue, osteoporosis, and hair loss. So when I was tired at the end of a long shift with a pot of that soup nearby, I still chose the samosas or chicken wings for fuel. When my husband Ben, who's Jewish, feels a cough coming on, he laments that we live in eastern North Carolina and there's no matzo ball soup to be found. I guess I could make some, but I'm sure my matzo balls would be dense and disappointing. And although I've never had it, I've read Chef Tunde Wei's account of Nigerian pepper soup made with goat broth, negro peppers, and agbo, or herbs soaked in water. Nigerians believe the soup treats things like malaria, typhoid, and the measles. Needless to say, I hope I never have to stew a pot of that. I'm a connect the daughter, so naturally I wanted to find the dot that is my culture's magic broth. What I uncovered is so obvious, it's embarrassing. Pot liquor the vitamin-rich broth left over from slow stewing a pot of greens with smoked pork is liquid gold in the American South. My mom drinks it from a teacup with the same attention I might sip a glass of fine Barolo. She says it's the healthiest and the tastiest part of the greens pot. The pot liquor is where all the good stuff goes while the greens boil towards soft oblivion. Nobody in my family wastes a drop of the murky liquid. Instead of multivitamins, we sop it, slurp it, or drink it for its ability to nourish and satisfy. Pot liquor heals. I'm sure of it. In fact, it's probably the next bone broth. 